Hi, my name is Courtney Pache. I'm the collections technician in the human history department at the Manitoba Museum. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite objects that we have here in our collection, these beautiful hair wreaths. Hair wreaths date back to the Victorian period when mourning was uh, a really big part of Victorian culture. So Queen Victoria famously mourned her husband's death uh, from the time that he passed away in 1861 all the way until she passed away in 1901. Victorians would commemorate the dead in lots of ways, including making wreaths and jewelry out of the hair of their deceased loved ones. The wreaths that we have today are a bit of a combination of that practice, um, but also as time continued on, people started using their hair, living hair, uh, to make wreaths. They would also borrow hair from their alive family members to construct these pieces. Uh, Victorians really loved their hair, they prized it. Uh, Victorian women would refer to their hair as their crowning glory. Uh, they often had very, very long hair, so there was an abundance of material to work with. We're going to take a close-up look at these wreaths, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the women who made them. So this wreath right here was made by Mary Jane McCaig. She came to Manitoba in 1881 by train from Ontario, um, and then farmed with her husband near Coulter, Manitoba. Uh, Mary Jane made this wreath with a lot of her own hair, but if we take a really close up look, we can see other hair colors in there. Um, and since people were not getting their hair dyed or highlighted at the time, we can assume that she was using hair from other family members to complete the wreath. She used a bunch of different techniques to create the wreath, including um, tying it around wire uh, so that she could create more structured pieces, um, and then also just kind of clumping and looping it together to create sort of a floral pattern. Mary Jane passed away uh, in 1895 while she was giving birth to her sixth child. So we know that that wreath uh, does not uh, did not have any additions to it after that time. This wreath here was made by Mary Seaback uh, in the late 19th century, probably starting around 1890. Mary Seaback also came from Ontario uh, and homesteaded here in Manitoba near Margaret. This wreath we, or semblance of a wreath, we know was made over a longer period of time, probably about 10 years or more. We can see that Mary used hair from a lot of different members of her family because there's huge variation in the colors. Um, and she has turned all of the hair into small flowers and foliage um, and also added some paper pieces to create a neat vase that is also edged in pieces of hair wrapped on wire um, to create this piece. Mary had her piece uh, put in a shadow box. This was very typical of how these hair wreaths would be presented. And they would be hung in your home, so when you have visitors, they would be able to see your handiwork right there on display. Hair wreaths eventually fell out of fashion in the early 20th century, but we actually still see a form of that uh, practice and that um, preservation of memory uh, when parents will cut their children's hair uh, and keep a little lock of it in their baby books or save a little lock from the baby's first haircut. These hair wreaths are in our storage room here at the Manitoba Museum. We have plenty more to show you. What else do you want to see?